Today, I'm gonna to go through the best way to clean brake pads. If they're squeal squealing a lot or just not grabbing that well, um, there are a few different ways to go about cleaning the brake pads, but there's really only one way that works really well all the time, in my opinion. Um, yeah, so like on this bike, the brakes squeal every once in a while, not always. So probably won't be too hard to clean them. Uh, should be pretty straightforward. Um, what we're gonna need are isopropyl alcohol and a clean rag or multiple rags if you want. Um, whatever tools you need to take out the brake pads. In this case, it's gonna be a flathead screwdriver but it might be an Allen key or some needle and those pliers, depending on what kind of brake pads you have. And the most important part is you're gonna need a propane blowtorch uh, because we're gonna torch these pads, burn off any excess material, like you know brake oil or any other contaminants that are gonna be on it. Um, yeah, and I guess, there are a few, couple other different ways to clean brake pads. Um, you can use some sandpaper and kind of scrape off that extra extra layer that uh, is causing your brakes to squeal. Um, you can also clean the pads, maybe get some water on there, rub them against one another. That works pretty well. But yeah, same with the sandpaper. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Um, Whereas, you know, I've had, you know, some success with that, but I've had success every single time um, burning off that excess fluid. So let's get into it. All right, so the first thing you wanna do is figure out what tool you need to take off the pads. As you can see here, I need a flathead screwdriver, small one. Um, so I'll use that. In some other brakes, you might need a two and a half or three millimeter Allen key. Or if you have a cotter pin on there, you might just need to get a needle nose pliers in there and just bend it out. Um, so yeah, go ahead and take, take this little clip off. Make sure you don't lose that. And then don't lose those. Keep them in a good spot. All right. All right. So go ahead and pull those out all right and so take a look at these they're pretty dirty they're not not super clean they could be i mean they could be dirtier but we definitely need to clean these thoroughly so we'll start with just wiping them down with some isopropyl alcohol um just to clean them up a little bit before we hit it with fire that's why all right, now for this step, you can pretty much use as much of this stuff as you want. I prefer 91% alcohol. The 70% stuff just doesn't really work as well. So try to get that if you can. And uh, yeah, you just rub some of that dirt off. You're not gonna get all of it off. That's okay, we'll get to that later. Um, and, and don't worry about getting it perfectly dry. Um, yeah, and so with using the blowtorch, the first thing you want to do is you want to figure out what type of pads you have, whether they're resin or metal specifically. Like these are metal pads you can see it says metal there um 
usually says on the back. And if you're not sure, the metal ones feel a bit smoother and they're harder because they're metal, of course. Uh, the resin ones feel a little softer and a little rougher. So if you're using metal pads, you can hit it with the blowtorch pretty much as much as you want. Um, you're really not gonna damage the pads by doing that. Um, if you have resin pads, then you wanna be a little bit more careful because you can actually like completely set them on fire if you use the blowtorch uh, a little bit too much on them. Um, and so, yeah, so these aren't, you know, like I said before, they weren't squealing too much, so I shouldn't need to hit them with the torch too much. Um, I mean, I could if I wanted to, but I'm just going to give them a quick, quick hit with the fire, um, and see if that fixes the issue. Cool. All right, so when you're using this method for cleaning the pads, the most important thing is that you do it outside. <laughs> you, you're you're uh, way more likely to not set anything on fire if you do it outside. Um, you know, I guess you could do it inside, but why would you, you know, try to burn your house down like that? So here we go. Cool. Now you want to let them sit for probably five or 10 minutes. Just say 10 minutes because you don't want to burn yourself. Um, so let them sit and uh, all we have to do is uh, come back and uh, bop them in the bike. And that's pretty much it. So that's why. All right. So while you're waiting for the pads to cool down, now's a good time to clean the rotor a little bit. <clears throat> so just get some more alcohol on there and just wipe it down a little bit. Yeah. So the rotor is pretty clean. Um, if your rotor is really dirty or it's really discolored, well, if it's really discolored, you probably want to replace it, but if it uh, still has a lot of grime on it, then you can always get some sandpaper and kind of scuff up the rotor a little bit. Um, that seems to help sometimes, but normally you can just, yeah, clean it uh, with some alcohol and a rag. All right, now that the pads have cooled down a bit, um, we're almost done we want to do is just take a clean rag, a dry rag, and just wipe off some of, if there's any excess, there might not be. Um, usually you can get a little bit of dirt off of here, um, you know, which the blowtorch tends to bring some dirt to the surface that you can't get with just isopropyl alcohol alone. And you want to make sure to get that off uh, you don't want to spray any more alcohol on here because that can actually get absorbed by the brake pads sometimes. Um, so that'll, that could actually make your pads feel even worse if you do that. So you want to keep them dry. Um, I know they don't look perfectly golden. They're a little bit cleaner than they were, but you know, they're not new. They're not new brake pads. 
if your pads are really worn out and you're having a lot of issues, then you usually just need to replace them. So these are getting pretty worn, but there's still some life left on them. So um, yeah, so that should pretty much do it. Now I just need to put them back on the bike. Um, and you always want to, you always want to um, just take a spin around the neighborhood. Um, you know, use the brake a little bit, just make sure that they're grabbing well. Um, and yeah, just, you know, bed in the pads a little bit, just do some steady, steady braking on them just to see, see how they feel. And usually when you go for a ride, go down the steep trail and by the bottom, they'll feel way better than they did up near the top. All right, that's it for now. Let me know in the comments for uh, any other ideas for future videos. Um, and if you like this video, give it a thumbs up um, if you found it helpful. If you did not like this video, give it a thumbs down. Um, I guess if you don't like playing with fire, you can give it a thumbs down as well. But I like playing with fire, you know, always did as a kid. So being able to uh, find an outlet for that while working on bikes is really nice. So um, anyways, that's it for now. Cheers.